Yeah. Which is, if I was going to persist this, uh, I know that there are risks involved, obviously, with persisting this kind of thing, um, but they're not really too big. Um, that would be, in your opinion, probably a separate entire thing, right? Like we could keep that persistence logic in a different module where we persist other stuff too, right? Yes. So you're saying if you want to persist the auto renewable for example, model? right? Let's see, there's one problem persisting a model that has a closure dependency, right? How are you going to store closure? If okay, it's just so you, data, it's easy. Sure. So you have to create something that would just be a representation of it. Because what, yes. what, what, what the use case would be basically is, well, let's say they're offline and they still want to use their subscription, right? And maybe we want to let them do that for a while or something. So if we do that, you know, we need to store somewhere that, uh, hey, they have an entitlement to this subscription, um, you know, and that kind of thing could be kept elsewhere, it could be separated. But it is also, I mean, kind of a concern of the store, right? Like, are, is the store going to give them access to this thing? Um, yeah. yeah, I recommend creating a separate model for the storage because then you don't need that right that closure here, for example, right? And when right. you you will convert these to some kind of like if you're storing with codable, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to encode it into some p list and store it to the file system. Right. You can create a representation that makes sense for a p list, for example. Right. Then you store it to the file system. When you restart from the file system, we need to convert this into auto renewable and pass the purchase closure, for example. Yeah. Now this can be done in any other module, right? Because the auto renewable is a public model. You say it can be done in any other module, but if it's just that one thing you're persisting, let's say in the app, then does it make sense to leave it in the store module to persist there? Since the store module right now is kind of becoming just a view model for the app to represent store purchases. I'm afraid it may start doing too many things. Yeah. It's already a bit hard to understand what's going on because of all sure. the complexity of store kit. Right. Now, okay. if we start mixing like core data or codable and file system here, it can right. get even more complex. Okay. So you would have it vend some kind of DTO to... So you have a component here that loads you from the in-app purchases, right? The, right? the app store. What does it return? An array of projects. Well, these this product is a kind of a generic struct that just holds uh, consumables, non-consumables, non-renewables, and, renewable, and auto-renewable kind of the, the main way that store kit returns things, the product types, it puts them in their own arrays. Right. So. And when you're purchasing something, you need to get all these details from the in app store. Right. So maybe the purchase logic should not be in the store as well. It should be in the in app store. Let's see. Okay. And try to explain where I'm going here. Okay, sure. If this is a view model that we live in the model there, I don't want it depending on any store kit details. Okay. You could create an interface here. Uh, auto renewable service. Load and it returns an array of auto renewable. Okay. Okay. And you will have implementations of this protocol, like the in app store auto renewable right. service. We we'll implement this and have its own logic how we create auto renewables. Mm -hmm. You will also have an implementation. Maybe it's a codable or a store, or a file system, or core data auto renewable service. Now your view model, the store that lives in the application model, you will not talk to in-app store, you will talk to the service. 
So we will hide it. We are hiding the provenance of the data. It may come from a core data one. It may come from in-app. It may even be a composition of them. First, try to load from core data and then load from the in-app store. Or if it fails from loading from the in-app store, try to load at least what we know was the last known state for the okay. in-app purchases, right? So you can create like compositions of it. Right, makes sense. Like, uh, auto renewable. My only question for this is, you know, you're kind of designing this interface to be uh, like a manual load um, to get stuff. Is that what I was shooting for with this was this idea that I could create something and then it would have this publisher. So I guess I could just change the interface to be return a publisher. That That's okay. Sorry. I answered my own question. <laughs> and the idea is to provide this service here as a dependency. Mm -hmm. The store just communicates with the service and keep the current known state in memory just to update yeah. the UI, right? But yeah. the logic of create of loading stuff from the store, from the app store, and converting it to offerings will be hidden. Makes sense. In the implementation. If you only from core data, the same thing. That makes sense. So we will pass here in the initializer service. Right, which makes mocking it much easier too. Okay, that's good. Here you have the service. What you do here is self dot Things equals service.load, for example. Sure. This is async. Right. There will be an implementation here for the map one, mm -hmm. one for the core data, and maybe you have a composite of auto renewable services. Right. It could be like a primary and a fallback. Yeah, that makes sense. Try to load from this service. If it fails, load from this one, for example. Or try to load from all of them and compose the result into a single array right. of unique IDs, for example. Yeah. For the store. Do not talk to a store kit anymore. Okay. You have an abstraction, service abstraction. It will hide any framework specific detail. You have different implementations. Sure. Like a store kit implementation. or data implementation and so on. Yeah. Then you have a core data implementation and so on. And you can compose them because they share the same interface. And this one's gonna to talk to core data. Yep. This makes a lot of sense. Now the store can probably live in the app now. Yeah. Which is kind of where it sort of felt like it should be anyway, so that makes sense too. It now just gets a auto renewable service from the module. Yes. Yeah. That's that's I like that better. Now, does it in the app and the app is Swift UI. Right. It makes sense right. for the store to implement yep. that. But all the logic is decoupled from Swift UI. Yeah. You can use with yeah. UI Kit if you want. You can use it with App Kit if you want. Mm -hmm. right. Watch OS, Watch Kit if you want. Right. That's good. And you have different implementations. 
think that would be much, much simpler. That makes a lot of sense. I think that testing this will also probably be easy too. This is good. 